Hey guys, it's me, McKenna Marmaleo, and I'm here with Libba Bray, the author of The Diviners, and we are at Murder by the Book. And um, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. We just got from, back from a book signing, and I got my book signed, and it's all pretty and everything. And um, so I have a couple of questions for you. Okay, hopefully I will have some answers for okay. you. Okay, first of all, this mm -hmm. book was fantastic. I got an thank advanced you. copy, um, and... I read it and I was just screaming and crying. It was beautiful. There are rumors that this book is going to be made into a movie. Can you tell me a little bit about that? I could, but then I'd have to kill you. Um, <laughs> yes, I can tell you about that. Uh, Paramount has optioned it, and I am working on the screenplay right now. So here's hoping. One never knows, but, you know, got a good vibe. We hope mm -hmm. that that will happen. That would be great. <laughs> I, I think it would be great. I, I'm in favor. Yes. I want to go down as officially being in favor of this being a movie. Huzzah. I saw it as a movie the second I started reading it. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Well, uh, apparently so to Paramount, and, yeah. and hopefully I will uh, hopefully I will make that, yeah. that, that screenplay thing happen. And, and how is that going? You were talking about it. And... That is an education. <laughs> wow. Uh, I'm learning an awful lot about screenplay writing, namely that I don't have the faintest idea how you write one. It's, it's so interesting because it's a completely different animal from writing a yeah. novel. And um, I am learning an awful lot. Yeah. Big learning curve. Yeah. I'm on version number 32, and I haven't turned anything in yet. This is just like, you know, kind of like getting the scenes yeah. down. And uh, it's because I could, I could rewrite a breakfast cereal box 12 ways from Sunday. <laughs> it's like, no, it is a mystery. Now it is simply an informational thing that tells you about the riboflavin. Now <laughs> it is a sensitive romance that also involves crunchy raisins. This is my problem. This could be the weirdest movie ever. Where did you get the ideas from the, for the characters? Well, I'll tell you, uh, I can tell you a little bit about um, Evie, mm -hmm. uh, whose name is really Evangeline. Many years ago, I was at my grandmother's house, and my grandmother was actually a teenager in the 1920s, and she had this box full of photographs. And so there were family photographs, and I was going through them, and I came across this picture of my Nana with this tall, blonde, flapper woman, and I had never seen this person before. I didn't know who she was, and I said, who is that? And my grandmother, who was like a staunch Presbyterian prude through and through, said, oh, that's Evangeline. She was hot to trot. She was trouble. And I, this woman was looking at the camera like she could take it in a fight. And I thought, I have got to use that uh -huh. name sometime as a character. So that was kind of like the spark for Evie a mm -hmm. long time ago, was I wanted somebody who was a little like Zelda Fitzgerald or Dorothy Parker, who had a mean wit and was a bit of a party girl. What character do you see yourself? Most as, I guess. That's, the same. <clears throat> that's always an interesting question to answer because I think that there are parts of your DNA that are woven into every character. So I, you know, I feel like there there are touchstones with each character, and that's what you're always looking for when you're writing is to find those touchstones that help the characters come to life. And so you're kind of there are little bits of you that are in every character. What about you? Was there a character that you related to the most? Evie. You would make a great Evie. Thank you. Let's hear you say, you're the cat's meow. You're the cat's meow. <laughs> nice. Done. <laughs> Thank See? you. It's done. We've done it here today, people. There you go. Paramount, you call me. Don't put that in. All your thoughts is belong to me. <laughs> so you were talking about writer's block. Yeah. Um, someone asked about how you get over writer's block, and you said you make a playlist. What was your playlist for writing this book? There are so many songs on this playlist because it, it runs almost, I mean, it's probably like an hour and a half long. Yeah. Um, and it's on my website. I think it's on the Diviners website too, the divinerseries.com. But I had a lot of 1920s music, mm -hmm. so everything from uh, you know Duke Ellington to Mamie Smith. And you know, I had things like the Varsity Drag and Charleston mm -hmm. and um, Paul Robeson, and so a lot of great 1920s stuff. Mm -hmm. But then I also had contemporary stuff. I was looking for things that were kind of moody and creepy. Mm -hmm. So um, Tubular Bells by Mike Oldfield and. Um, organ Donor by DJ Shadow, and uh, I had a lot of Timber Tambra. But just being able to listen to that over and over again kind of mm -hmm. helped me. Set you in the mood. Yeah, got me in the mood. It like took me to a place. Mm -hmm. I know all of what she's talking about. Yay! This is beautiful. This makes well, me happy. When I was reading it, I had, my, I had my own playlist on Spotify. So you were talking about how you love history so much. Yeah. 
Um, since you are a writer, when you were in school, what was your favorite subject, history or English? English was my favorite, actually, I, because I had a fantastic English teacher, mm -hmm. Willa Mae Burledge, which is just such a great name anyway, mm -hmm. but she was about five feet and about 98 pounds soaking wet, and she was total fierce. One time she said, Libba, I think you might be, she, this is the way she talked, or this is my impression of her, <laughs> I think you might be an existentialist. I have some things you should read. And so she, you know, she got me to read all of these things that, that were kind of outside my comfort zone that I wouldn't have thought about reading. And um, they were things that are still things that I love to this day. Uh, and this is my way of saying that teachers are awesome and, uh, and they, they influence lives. Mm -hmm. So, but, but English was my favorite subject and probably I would say history was my second favorite mm -hmm. subject. It was definitely not math. Let's just put, let's just put that out there. I am right there with you. Oh man. You mentioned the eugenics. The yes. Whole, and the, I just got finished with that in history class. You did. So I knew what you were talking so about. I couldn't, I couldn't strike up a conversation about it at all, but I got a 90 on that test. So I was happy. It's one of those things that, uh, it's just such a chilling mm -hmm. discovery. And, and to look back and see that, you know, um, there was a case in 1927. I think it's 1927. It's Buck versus Bell. It's a very famous case. And it's about a woman who was sterilized without her consent. Mm -hmm. And when the case made its way to the Supreme Court, uh, Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes at the time said uh, he ruled in favor of, of the state instead of right. instead of uh, this woman, and basically said that the state's rights outweighed the individual's. Um, I think I know what you're talking about. And this is beautiful. Which is just <laughs> like, you know, yeah. like, really? There were just so many things about that that I, I hadn't known the full history. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and I, I remember there was a book that was written in 1916 called The Passing of the Great Race, which is this very racist book. And there is some mention of it actually made in The Great Gatsby. When I reread The Great Gatsby before writing this, um, I went, oh, wow, they actually mention it in mm -hmm. there. And one of my inspirations for writing this book was that I had also kind of wanted to write about post 9-11 America mm -hmm. and some of the things that were going on in our country. Um, but I wasn't sure how to write about it. And at the same time, I was already researching the 1920s and yeah. I'd wanted to write this supernatural thing. And those things kind of came together because I saw how there was so much overlap yeah. and how the th things that happened in the past, of course, influenced the present. As, as Shakespeare says, the past is prologue. Um, and really what it gets down to is the monsters that we think we're fighting, or these kind of monsters that we create for mm -hmm. books, are never as frightening or as monstrous as the monstrous things that human beings can do. Yeah. So. If you weren't writing, where would you be right now? <laughs> uh, I'd probably be, <laughs> you probably can't use this, uh, I'd be committed. Say you can do anything. Yeah. If I could do anything, <laughs> shoot the moon, I would be a theoretical physicist and I would be working on the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. But, however, <laughs> I think as we understand, I can barely get through second grade math, so that's clearly not happening. Thanks for watching and thank you, Libba, for... Thank Being you, there. McKenna. What? You're so welcome. <laughs> You're made of awesome. Make sure you check out this book. It is fantastic. I recommend it to all of you. Um, Thank you. Make sure that you subscribe and like and share this video with all of your friends and fellow book readers, and that you look at all the description below, and that you look at all the stuff in the description below because it will probably have links to the website. I approve this message. Stay weird. Stay weird, kids. <laughs> we just finished Act 1! Oh my god! Oh my god! Snap! Snap! Oh my god! Oh my god! I would like to introduce you to the new member of the family. I present Pumpkin Starscream Amidala.